It's no secret that people all over the world are stretched incredibly thin. Between higher cost of living, mounting consumer debt, and with auto loans costing an arm and a leg, in many regards, life is just simply unaffordable. And as of some recent data, it looks as though people who have taken out auto loans over the last couple of years may be looking at ways to try to get out of them. But before we dive into that, I do have a quick announcement. Black Friday is here and the Car Sharing Masterclass once yearly Black Friday sale is going on right now. If you're watching this between November 9th and November 30th, 2023, then take action now and use the code BLACKFRIDAY200 to get $200 off your purchase of the Car Sharing Masterclass. This is the biggest sale that we've ever run, and once it's over, it won't be back until next year, November 2024. I've been a Turo host for over six years, and I've compounded all my experience and knowledge and squeezed it into seven hours worth of content for the Car Sharing Masterclass, where I'll show you everything that you need to know about starting a Turo side hustle. Everything from LLCs, how to work with insurance, what type of cars you should buy, where to buy cars, setting up automated communication systems, and even what to do in the case that your car is in an accident, as well as everything in between. We have hundreds of successful students, and I would love for you to be the next one or your money back guaranteed. Click the link down in the description below to steal the deal now. Google Trends, which is a feature on Google that allows for you to see how search phrases or words are trending, has revealed that people are searching for the term give car back more than ever. You can see the graph here which shows that this phrase has been steadily climbing over the last couple of years in popularity, hitting its peak just recently. Now the scale of this graph is a bit weird, but according to Google, numbers represents research interest relative to the highest point on the chart for the given region and time. A value of 100 is the peak popularity for the term. A value of 50 means that the term is half as popular. A score of zero means that there was not enough data for this term. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I would be interested to see how many people are actually searching for this phrase rather than the relative popularity. But let's be real, I think that we can all agree that Google knows how to display a data set most efficiently more than I do. But what this does is it gives us some really valuable insight into the overall state of the auto loan and consumer debt problem. And it also gives us some insight into where the headspace of the average consumer actually lies. And the reality is people are in over their heads with auto loans. And the thing is, is that people who are finding themselves underwater on car loans who maybe bought those cars back in 2021 or 2022, they're now in a situation where they can't afford the car, but you really can't sell the car either because oftentimes these people owe more than what the car is actually worth, especially if they bought that car during the height of the inflated car market. And because of the fact that it is difficult to sell a car that you're underwater on, people are looking at alternatives, and that is to just simply give the car back altogether and wipe your hands clean, which obviously isn't really a realistic solution either. But it's not just auto loan debt that has created a concerning trend. It is the entire U.S. debt situation as a whole, and while auto loans play a huge role in this, they are just one piece of the puzzle. And to really depict this, let's take a look at a report from last quarter from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. This here is a report released by the Federal Reserve every quarter, and this most recent report was actually just released this week. And what it does is it breaks down the current U.S. debt situation across different types of debts, and it analyzes debt by age group, delinquency status, and type. And you can see here a breakdown of the total debt balance and its composition, with mortgages making up the majority of debt, but student loans and auto loans both picking up 9%, and credit cards making up 6%. Student loans, auto loans, and credit cards have been increasing in recent years. And you can see here that the total amount of debt that Americans hold have been increasing in recent years. Now, this slide right here breaks down the total number of accounts that Americans hold. This isn't in dollar value, but instead by the number of accounts. So, for example, one loan, regardless of the amount, counts as one. And you can see here that over recent years, credit cards have been increasing, mortgages are relatively flat, and auto loans have actually been decreasing in recent years, which is due to a few different reasons, including the car market being extremely tight and there not being as many cars to buy, as well as tightening of credit standards and high interest rates, making it less desirable to borrow money for a car. But I want you to keep this in mind as we go through data later on in this video that the number of auto loan accounts have actually gone down. This is very important and we'll talk about why in a second. If we scroll down to this side, you can see a breakdown of auto loan originations. You can not only see how much money and loans are being originated each and every year, but you can also see the breakdown by credit score as well, with superprime borrowers borrowing the most amount of money and subprime and deep subprime borrowers borrowing more than $40 billion per year. 
And what an origination is, is whenever money gets borrowed to buy a car or a house or whatever type of debt we're talking about. So if you go to a bank and you say, hey, I want to borrow $30,000 to buy a car, and they say yes, and they give you that money, that is the point of origination for that auto loan. You can also see here that over the last couple of years, specifically throughout and after the pandemic, even though the amount of accounts that loan holders hold are going down, as we talked about in the last slide, the actual amount of money that people are borrowing has been going up. Granted, it is down a bit from 2021 and 2022, but it is up historically speaking. This is because the amount of money that people are borrowing is more than ever before, even if the number of accounts that they hold is actually less. But I do want to pivot this discussion to talk about delinquency status. We hit an all-time peak in delinquency status during the Great Recession. And truthfully, delinquencies have been steadily going down over the years, and they hit an all-time low during the pandemic. Which, at first glance, seems like a really good thing, and it seems as though things are heading in the right direction. But whenever we take a look at the total U.S. debt situation, it's not as good as it may seem on the surface. And we can get a more in-depth glimpse of this by looking at 90-day delinquency status. This is broken down by loan type. And you can see that while mortgages are relatively flat and are also at an all-time low, auto loans and credit cards have been rising, credit cards more significantly than auto loans. And student loans are at an all-time low, significantly lower than where they've been trending over the last decade. And the reason why this is the case is because there are many borrowers that have been benefiting from COVID-era policy. For example, student loans. Student loans aren't at an all-time low delinquency rate because people are great at paying back their student loans. It's at an all-time low because during the pandemic, student loan pauses and forgivenesses were implemented. And this meant that people couldn't default on their loans even if they weren't paying them, which many people weren't. The same can be said for mortgages, even auto loans. Foreclosures and auto loan repossessions were paused during the pandemic, not to mention the fact that people had excess cash during this period of time, keeping them afloat even if they they technically couldn't afford the things that they were buying. And I've talked about this on my channel before, but what happens whenever student loans return and you can once again default on those, which isn't going to happen until next year? Well, I think it's safe to assume that student loan delinquency rates will probably return to about that 12% mark. And as a result of this, other debts will also creep up as well. Because as people are forced to make their student loan payments, they may in turn fall behind on some of their other bills. And you can really begin to see this take a turn because whenever we look at percent of balance 90 plus days delinquent, the data isn't really alarming. But whenever we take a look at the 30-day data, you can see that delinquencies are beginning to sharply increase. Auto loans and credit cards have increased sharply, and mortgages have also increased by about a percent. This is not a good sign, and it is a telltale sign that 90-day delinquencies and just overall delinquencies will also be increasing as well. Not only has the transition into serious delinquency for 30-plus days gone up, but so has 90-plus day delinquencies as well. There's been a sharp increase in credit card delinquencies, a pretty steady increase with auto loan delinquencies, and there's even been an increase in home mortgage delinquencies. And as you can see, once again, student loan delinquencies is flat, if not declining slightly. And the reason why this is the case is what I talked about earlier in this video, is that during the pandemic, not only did many banks and financial institutions put a pause on making accounts delinquent, but people also had an influx of cash as well, preventing them from going delinquent. And for some people, carried them for a couple of years up until now. And so this has kept delinquency rates historically low, even though the pandemic has been in our rearview mirror for quite a while now. But this is beginning to catch back up with consumers because purchases that these people made during 2020, 2021, and 2022 are now purchases that they can no longer afford. Now, I want to take a look at this slide right here, which shows us third-party collections. And truthfully, I think of all of the slides that I'm going through in this video, this is probably one of the ones that I view as more concerning. This is because of the fact that over the course of the last few years, really even before the pandemic, the amount of consumers that have collection on a percentage basis is going down, but the amount of money that is in collections is going up. So the average debt in collections is higher than it's ever been before, even if the amount of people that are being affected by that is less. And the reason why I find this so concerning is I think in many regards, it foreshadows what can happen to other debt holders that have also overextended themselves with debt, particularly when student loans kick back in. Because it's not just people who are behind on their debt that have taken out astronomical debt. There's just a large portion that haven't gone delinquent quite yet. This is because of the fact that over the last couple of years, people have been simply overspending. And the amount of debt that the average American has, especially the average American who has their accounts in collections, has been increasing over the last couple of years. 
And this is a trend that we've been seeing a lot. The amount of accounts that people hold are less, but the amount that those accounts are valued at is significantly more, and this is not a good sign. This is especially a bad sign whenever we look at how debt is distributed across the average consumer. You can see that for all age groups, mortgage makes up the most amount of debt. But for the 18 to 29 year olds, not only do they have less mortgage debt, which is largely considered one of the safest forms of debt, but they also have the most auto loan debt and they have the most student loan debt. And again, I wanna reiterate that student loans have been paused for the last couple of years and they've just now kicked back up and they're not gonna be able to go delinquent until next year. This is also the same age group of people that are beginning to fall behind on their car loans today. Because according to recent data, people who are from 18 to their early 30s are the people that are suffering the most from falling behind on their car payments. They're also the same group who owe the most in student loans. The same people who've had those student loan payments paused for the last couple of years. You can also see here that whenever we look at auto loan delinquencies, that 18 to 29 age group is the ones with the highest delinquency rates. 30 to 39 follows second. But you can see here that there has been a sharp increase in delinquencies over the last year. Credit cards, the same thing. 18 to 29 year olds are seeing the highest rate of delinquencies for credit cards. And while student loans are flat as of right now, I think we can all agree that this will be increasing now that student loan payments have been resumed. As of right now with student loans, wages can't be garnished and the repercussions for not paying back your student loans as of recording this video are relatively minimal. But starting next year, those repercussions are going to continue and there's going to be a lot more pressure to pay back your student loans. And remember that whenever it comes to bankruptcy, student loans cannot be forgiven. They don't go away whenever you file. And so I could imagine that for some people who are finding themselves in a tough situation and they can't afford their house, their car, and their student loans, they may opt to give up their car first because that's something that they can give up relatively easily, rather than their house, which they need for shelter, and their student loans, which are never going to go away. Now, to a degree, I sound like a broken record on my channel because I feel like for the last six months to a year, I've been talking about how the U.S. debt situation is simply unsustainable. But here in this video, we went over hard data that is an absolute fact reported by the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. But we also have gotten a really nice glimpse into what the average consumer is thinking by what they're searching on Google, which is the phrase, give car back, which I think tells us a lot about what consumers are hoping or wanting to do with their auto loans. Give it back and get rid of it. I've said many times on this channel before that the U.S. debt situation is simply unsustainable, and I think that what we've been seeing with these reports and with consumer trends, with Google, it really confirms that fact. People are getting squeezed by the cost of existing and living, and the debt that they took out during the pandemic is a debt that they probably regret and they are beginning to fall behind on. And higher auto loans, higher credit card debt, the return of student loans, higher cost of living, inflation, all of these different aspects of the U.S. economy are beginning to compound on top of one another. And I've said it many times before, and I will continue to say it, it is simply unsustainable. And while I certainly am not an economist, if I was a betting person, I would bet that this will lead to some sort of economic crash sooner than later. And once this happens, the impact that this will have on the car market will be absolutely massive. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.